Hi, it's Rob Bryans, and welcome back to the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Here I am again, a floating head over uh, tops, uh, over top of images of space. Uh, this is actually a video uh, from YouTube called Perfection, and uh, if you just search for that word, I'm sure you'll be able to find it. Uh, some lovely images in this, uh, very fitting for the discussion today. Today's entry is called the Omniverse. If you go to tenthdimension.com/blog, you can read along. There are some uh, additional links within the the text version of the blog that you can click on. Uh, this blog entry starts with a quote from the uh, famous physicist Brian Greene, who says, Just as we envision all of space as being out there, as really existing, we should also envision all of time as being out there, as really existing too. Ever hear of the Omniverse? If you haven't, look it up in Wikipedia. This word attempts to deal with the linguistic problem presented to cosmologists who had to start from the long-established all-encompassing word universe, coming from Latin roots which mean everything turned into one. That was the problem. If the universe is already supposed to refer to everything, then what do you call more than one universe? The word multiverse has been pressed into service as part of the attempt to imagine all universes together, but the word is used in multiple ways. Some writers use it to describe the set of all possible timelines, or par parallel universes, a la Everett's Many Worlds interpretation, resulting from chance and choice for our own universe, while the word is also used to encompass all possible expressions of all possible universes. The word omniverse, on the other hand, is unambig un unambiguous. It takes all the universes, all the multiverses, all possible expressions of matter and energy, and the information that becomes reality, a phrase I've used many times now, and looks at all of that as a single, simultaneous whole. Here's what I proposed in my last blog entry. If the underlying fabric of reality includes every possible different initial conditions universe, and all possible timelines for each of those possible universes, what is it that constrains our own universe and keeps it from wandering off into the other parts of the omniverse where our version of physical reality becomes impossible? The answer, I would say, is that we are constrained by our position within the seventh dimension. Or as some cosmologists say, it is because our 3D universe is embedded within a three-dimensional brain and a seven-dimensional brain. In other words, we are already headed towards the natural equilibrium state where our universe enfolds into a single, balanced whole, which aligns nicely with the theories of physicist David Vaughan. So let's look at my way of visualizing the dimensions and fit these three words in. A point in the fourth dimension would be our own space-time universe at a particular instant. A point in the seventh dimension is our universe's multiverse of all possible timelines, or parallel universes for our universe, viewed simultaneously. The tenth dimension, as I'm visualizing it, can only be a point. So the tenth dimension is the omniverse of all possible potential expressions of matter and energy, the underlying fabric of quantum reality in its unobserved state. Does that mean imagining the omniverse would have been a better name for this project? Perhaps. But there are a great many terms used to refer to the same idea that I'm encapsulating within the tenth dimension. The unobserved quantum fabric, the Teilhardian Omega point, the Godelian outside the system, the computational underpinnings behind digital physics. All of these ideas are about the same thing. The place where everything fits together into timelessness. That's all today from Rob Bryanton. This is Imagining the Tenth Dimension. Enjoy the journey.